cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything. And it's been a while since we've done some functional prints, huh? So let's do some functional prints. You guys know I love my pegboards. I've got a lot by now and I'm always printing little fixtures for it. Over here, I've got things to hold my VR setup, my hard drives, my office supplies, photography, shipping stuff, everything. It's all up on the wall. I love it. It's nice and organized. On the other wall, I've got my Make Anything logo. I've got my Patreon pixels. Downstairs in the garage, I've got even more pegboards to hold tools and all kinds of random stuff for my printers. I like pegboards. Pegboards are great. So I thought it would be fun to make some more pegboard hangers together. Today we're going to make three different models and I, I try to find things that are kind of common and useful for a lot of people. So we're going to make three models and we're going to be using this Matter Hackers build filament. You guys might notice that I use Matter Hackers Pro PLA for a lot of my projects. It's consistent, it's got nice colors, it prints wonderfully. It's great stuff. But Matter Hackers also has this Build PLA, which is also pretty darn good, and it's about half the price. So if you guys just want to be printing large things, or you just don't want to spend $40 for a roll of filament, you should really check out Build Filaments from Matter Hackers. They're really great, and that's what we're going to be using today. Anyways, we've got a lot of models to make, so let's jump into Fusion 360 and start making. The first thing we're going to make is a pen holder, because I do a lot of sketching, a lot of drawing, so I've got a lot of pens. And I'm going to go ahead and use my calipers to measure this Sharpie. It's one of my fatter pens, so that'll help me get an idea of what the thickest pen I need to be able to hold is. And then we're going to open up my peg library here. I've got all the different holders that I've made, but these two up here are the most important because these are the base pegs. I've got the soft one for things that are lighter or that I need to remove often. And then I've got this regular peg, which I use for like my camera lenses and things that I want to make sure that they're going to stay in place. So I'll make these available in the description so you guys can download this base peg and follow along and build out with me or make whatever holder you want. So let's go ahead and start with this soft peg since pens don't weigh much at all, so we can use the, the softer peg. As you can see, we've got one peg here. We've got all that figured out. And the next thing we got to do is use this move copy command and create a copy. And we're going to move that over to create the second peg. And just how far we want to move it depends on how wide the thing we're making is. But we want to make sure to go by one inch increments because that's how far apart the holes are on our pegboard. In this case, I'll go five inches and then we can draw on the top layer here. And I pretty much always start my sketch on that flat face of the peg because this surface that I'm drawing right now is what's gonna be on the build plate of my printer. And we gotta make sure that it's completely flat so we don't need any support material. So first thing I'm gonna do is create this rectangle and then I'm gonna use the project command to bring these lines into my current sketch. That way I can use them as reference. For example, here I'm going between the two midpoints and making that construction line. That way I can make another line coming from the middle of that line, bring that down to the middle of this rectangle, and then I'll right click on that and give it the vertical constraint. And now this rectangle will always be centered between the two pegs. So as you can see, if I drag one edge, the other edge moves as well. Now let's hit D and start adding some dimensions. So here I'm gonna dimension between this line and this line. And I'm going to make that two millimeters because that's just the general good wall thickness for my pen rack. And then here I'm going to make this 13 millimeters so that it's wide enough for my pens. For the length of this entire thing, we're going to go ahead and do that by inches. So even though I work in millimeters, you can still type in 5.5 inches and it'll automatically convert that to millimeters, which is pretty nice. So let's make this 5.75. We just don't want to make it six because then you can't really put two things side by side on my pegboard. But 5.75 is good. Now we want to extrude this rectangle down and I'm going to go minus 40 millimeters. And that's basically how deep this slot is going to be that's holding our pens. And you might be confused right now why I have this solid block and why it's not touching my pegs. But what I'm designing right now is actually what's going to be the empty space in my pen rack. I'll just fill it the sides here, and now I'll show you exactly what I mean. 
What I'm gonna do is go to modify and click on the shell command, which basically creates this hollow body. I'll select this top face to make that the open section of the shell, and then I'm gonna shell outward two millimeters, which makes the walls meet up with the pegs here. You can see that the round starts a little bit early, so I'm actually gonna go back to my earliest sketch and I'll make the whole container a little bit wider. And now you can see the pegs connect to the container at a flat surface here, which is perfect. So anyways, there we go. We've got a little, a little container here that we can already put pens in, but I wanna add some separators that way all the pens sit side by side a little more nicely. So what I'll do is sketch on this inside plane and I'm gonna create a rectangle here. That'll be my first separator. We can use project again to bring in these round sides because we're gonna reference that for the spacing on these spacers. <laughs> and we can go ahead and create a line here, just a construction line. That way I can use dimension from this outside uh, point and up to this line. And we'll make that 13 millimeters so it matches the height. As far as the walls here, we'll make this two millimeters to match the other walls. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select that and use a rectangular pattern to pattern it in this direction to create several spacers. We'll drag that over here, but let's actually cancel that because we need a reference on this side too. I'll just draw a circle as a construction line so we know where that 13 millimeter point is as well. Now I can do that rectangular pattern and bring it up right to that edge. Now I can increase the quantity of this pattern until I have kind of equal looking spaces. That looks like it's about a square. We can go ahead and dimension and measure this really quickly. And that's 11 point something, so it's a little bit narrow. So let's click on this little pattern icon to edit our pattern. And we'll change that from 10 to nine. And when we do that, we've got a little more width. We'll measure it and it's just over 13. So that's actually pretty perfect. So let's click the create button here and do a, an extrusion of all these little slots. And we'll just pull those upward, maybe halfway. We don't actually need the slots coming all the way to the top, just enough to hold the bottom of the pens in place. And I think it'll look a little nicer if it doesn't come all the way to the edge. To be super precise, I could change the extent here to object, select this face, and then I can offset that. Maybe we'll offset it 10, minus 10, so that it sits about a centimeter down inside of that slot. So there we go, we've got our little pen rack and all these little slots to hold our pen in. We could actually just stop there and we'd pretty much have a good little pen rack, but I'm gonna do a few little details here to make it nicer. We could do a chamfer here at the bottom, it makes it a little less sharp of a corner. And let's also go in here and add some fillets to these little slots. So if we make that a one millimeter fillet to create a perfect round, that'll make it a little bit easier to slip the pens into place. It's a very slight detail, but it'll also slightly improve the experience. And we wanna do that whenever we can. So there we go, we've got a perfectly good pen rack, but as I mentioned, I do have a lot of pens. So what I'm gonna do is actually use the move copy command again, and I'm gonna copy this entire container and stack it. That way we can hold twice as many pens. So let's move that like so, and we'll also bring it down a bit. That way it's easier to access both rows. So yeah, we'll move that down maybe 20 millimeters. And now to make sure that we still don't need support material, we just need to use the modify command and bring this wall all the way up. That way it's flat on the top where we will be printing up from. All right, there we go, everything looks good. So now let's just go ahead and use that combine function to merge all of our shapes, the pegs and the two containers together into one single solid body. That way we can export it all as a nice seamless STL file. That'll be nice and easy to print out. All right, here we have the pen rack a few hours into the print on our CR10S. And here you can see it all finished up and it looks pretty solid. Like I said, that Matter Hackers build filament does a great job. It looks super clean and there's not really much to complain about. Now to stick it onto my pegboard, I think I'm gonna put it right here next to my other office supplies, my scissors and such. We'll stick it right there on the bottom so it's nice and easy to access and 
then I can go ahead and move some of this stuff out of the way. That's the nice thing about the pegboard, it's really easy to modify and move things around. Let's stock it up with all my pens. And yes, I do need that many Pilot pens because man, I love them and I do a lot of sketching. Next up, we're gonna make a holder for this giant roll of duct tape because duct tape is useful for everything. And also a lot of people who have 3D printers need a roll of masking tape to put on their print bed. So this same design will work for blue painter's tape as well. So it's a pretty useful design, I think. We're gonna go ahead, measure the diameter and the depth. And for this one, we're gonna use the regular pegs because this duct tape roll is pretty heavy. By the way, you always wanna save this as a new file right away because we don't wanna accidentally save over that base peg that we're gonna use in the future. So we'll save this as the tape holder. And now we're gonna go ahead and once again, do a copy and move this peg over to create a second peg. And for this one, I'm actually gonna do three pegs because like I said, this duct tape is really heavy and we want several pegs to really hold it to the wall. So I'm gonna do one copy, one inch to the side, and then I'm just gonna repeat the step, but this time I'll copy it over two inches. So now we have three pegs all one inch apart. In this case, we're gonna draw on this face here, flat onto the pegs. And to keep things centered, I'll start by drawing a construction line straight down from this center peg. From this point, I'll draw a circle, and I'm gonna make that match the size of the inside of my duct tape roll maybe a little bit smaller, that way we'll be able to slip the roll over this circle. And what we can do now is draw a straight line that lines up with these pegs, because like I said, we're gonna be printing from those flat surfaces. So this top of the circle, we can just cut off. And then we're also gonna cut off the bottom of the circle because we don't need it. I'll draw that second cutoff line right here through the middle. Next, we're gonna offset some lines. We'll offset this so that it's thicker than the peg, so five millimeters. And then I'm also gonna offset this circle inward five millimeters to have a consistent wall thickness. Now we're gonna do an extrude and select these parts of this wall that I created. Extrude that outward and that's basically gonna be the ledge that our roll will sit on. So I'll extrude this out 50 millimeters which is just slightly thicker than the roll of duct tape. And that's pretty good, but I wanna create a little ledge at the front to make sure that the roll doesn't accidentally fall off. So I'll do a sketch on this face right here, and then I'm gonna follow similar steps, creating another circle that matches the diameter of that inside of the roll. But this one, I'm gonna shift it upwards a tiny bit and create that line again that lines up with the build surface. First, let's cut away these little sections, and then we can go to this drop down and turn that sketch on again because we wanna use it one more time to actually extrude these little sections here as well as this part. We'll extrude that out maybe three millimeters, and that's gonna be that little ledge that keeps the roll from falling off. Once again, we could stop here, but it's always nice to go in and add a little finesse. So we'll add some fillets in here to round things out. And let's actually go to this back face here and project these lines and draw a line along the bottom so that we can extrude that and create an additional wall here, which will make everything a little stronger and sturdier. It also gives more surface area that'll be against the pegboard to kind of keep everything stable. Now we'll go in here, we'll do some fillets again, a few more tiny little fillets right here. I just like rounding things out and keeping things from being too pointy. But there we go. Let's go ahead and print it out and see what it looks like. Here's the print all finished up on the CR-10S once more. Once again, it's a very clean, beautiful print. So we'll go ahead and stick it on our pegboard. Before completely attaching it, I'll kind of test it out. Here, I wanted to bring it down a little bit more just to give everything its appropriate space. But as you can see, it's holding onto the roll really well. It's easy enough to take on and off. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. But I am gonna move this ruler over one peg just so that they're not touching. That kind of bothers me. Finally, the last model I wanna make is a little cable holder for these charging cables for my HTC Vive controllers because when I'm not charging, I don't want the cables to just fall to the floor, so I need something to hold those loosely into place. All I really need to measure for this is the width of the cable, and it's about 3.4 millimeters. So let's go ahead and whip something up really quickly here in Fusion 360. 
By now you guys know the drill. Take the original peg, do a move copy, copy that over. We'll do one inch and I'll just draw out this profile with a little bit of a notch in it, which is where my cable is gonna be held. Let me select these two lines and make them equal. And then I also want everything to be centered again, so I'll draw another reference line using the centers of these pegs. And then I'll bring a line down here, connect these midpoints, and make this vertical. There we go, now it's time to add dimensions. So here for this slot that's holding the cable, I'm gonna make this four millimeters, a little bit bigger than that 3.6 that the actual cable is, so that I can move around. And then we'll kind of just adjust everything else until it looks decent. I'll do a two millimeter offset here, a line here, a line here to close off that profile. And just like that, I can extrude this from the top of the peg right down to the bottom. So we've got this tiny little thing. And once again, I'll add that finesse by adding some fillets here two millimeters to create a perfect round for this little notch, and then four millimeters here to create a concentric fillet. And why not add a few more tiny, tiny little fillets? Every little detail counts. All right, that's really it. Save that body as an STL, print it out. I made two in this case because I've got two Vive controllers. And then we'll go ahead and test it out. Put my cable in place, stick it in, and yeah, it looks good. Everything plugs in pretty freely. The cable isn't too tight. I'm liking it. Awesome, so with these new additions, I actually moved some things around, put the VR stuff to the left, photography to the right. Easy enough when you've got a pegboard. And I also added another pen rack because like I said, I've got a lot of pens. Wow, doesn't that look good? I love getting things off my desk and onto the wall. I think all these pegboards are like some of the greatest things I've ever made as far as lifestyle changes. I'm so much more organized now and everything's always on its certain spot on the wall where it's meant to be. All these files are gonna be up on my mini factory. Check it out. They're for free as always, but hey, it doesn't mean you can't leave me a tip if you guys like my files. I would very much appreciate that. Anyways, that's it for today. So until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired. Bye.